Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. It's related to the How to Solar Power Your Portable Ham Radio series, but not quite the same as the previous videos. Today we're looking at the Victron 7515 charge controller, and uh, I'm going to show you a problem that I'm having with it, and I'm hoping we can sort that problem out as a community. Stick with me, and I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign Mary. So this is the problem I'm having with the Victron 7515 MPPT charge controller. I've already tried it with a variety of different solar panels, as well as lithium iron phosphate batteries with and without internal BMS. So the noise is definitely coming from within the Victron 7515. Now the noise is definitely worse on 160 meters and 80 meters. Now, as I just demonstrated, the only way to stop this noise is by disconnecting the solar panel. Plug it back in, and the noise returns. Now, the problem isn't only on 160 and 80 meters. Switching over to 40 meters, we can see we have a very similar problem. In fact, the ripple from this charge controller wipes out entire amateur radio bands. This is a complete no-go for any type of weak signal work unless you're using, for example, a narrow band with JS8 call or CW. Unfortunately, switching over to 20 meters isn't much better. In fact, at least from the visual representation, it appears to be worse. Let's jump up to 10 meters and see how that sounds. We can argue if 10 meters is any better, but really, from a weak signal perspective, the noise from this charge controller shuts down the entire band. Now let's jump down to 17 meters. Well, at least 17 meters is actually quite usable. The noise isn't so bad here, although it has been on all the other bands we've tried so far. Let's jump back down to 40 meters to ensure it's not a fluke. Let's try the noise blanker and noise reduction. Well, noise reduction definitely helped. Let's actually increase the level of noise reduction on the 705 to see if we can get it down to at least an acceptable level. Well, it's definitely better, but it's not great. So by now, many of you have either seen the YouTube shorts I've created with the Victron 7515 or the Instagram reel I posted with the Victron 7515. The noise created on 80 meters, 40 meters, 60 meters, 30 meters, 20 and 17 was just horrific and it's not any better now. 
But afterwards, I made a blog post, which many of you have commented on and left feedback. That feedback suggested uh, overwhelmingly two different possible solutions to this problem with Victron. The first was to use a toroid on the load port. So I've got a toroid here. We're going to test that one. The second fix was not to use the load port at all, but to connect our radio equipment directly to the battery and simply use the charge controller to charge the battery. So just leaving out the load port entirely. We're going to do that too. I've got a, a splitter cable here so we can test that out. Now, many of you are probably wondering what the heck are we doing with the uh, Victron charge controller anyway. Most of the time on the channel, we use the Genesan, or Genesan, however you want to say it if you're in America, uh, the Genesan charge controller because it's relatively quiet from an RFI perspective. Uh, it's a magnificent charge controller, but it's limited to 10 amps. Genesan doesn't have a 15 amp or 20 amp model yet, and they don't have a model which uh, can stack a series of solar panels up to, for example, 75 or 100 volts like Victron does. That's why we're using or testing the Victron. Uh, there are circumstances, either club stations or emergency communication stations, base camps, or a variety of other situations where we need a lot of uh, current coming in from solar panels or a lot of voltage coming in with solar panels stacked in, solar arrays stacked in series. And we wanted to get that with a single charge controller. Now we could stack multiple charge controllers with the Guinness on, but that becomes expensive. Two is fine, four is ridiculous. You know what I mean? We're trying to take advantage of Victron's higher current and voltage capabilities so that we get a practical technical solution while keeping the budget relatively small. The only problem we have with the Victron at the moment is this RFI. So we're going to put this in line between the radio and the load port of the charge controller while charging to see if, if this makes any difference or does uh, gives us some help for the RFI. Stand by. This is our power cable for the amplifier and the 705. We'll plug one end of the toroid in here. And we're going to plug the other end into the load port of the 7515. We should immediately hear a difference. Three, two, one, plug. Wow, that's a bummer. You can hear it, but I'll go ahead and show you the screen again. So you see the hash is still there. I'll go ahead and disconnect the solar panel so you can see. The hash stops. Now, some operators have suggested putting the toroid between the uh, solar panel and the charge controller. I don't think it'll work, but let's go ahead and test it. And there we have the toroid now between the solar panel and the 7515. Absolutely no help whatsoever. So what if we go ahead and connect the battery directly to, the, I mean, sorry, we connect the radio equipment directly to the battery and the charge controller directly to the battery and bypass the load port entirely. Stand by while I do that.
Now we've definitely got a little bit of hash, but I would say this, at least on 40 meters, is acceptable. Let's go down to 80 meters. So there was absolutely no help on 80 meters. We've still got the hash there, but 40 meters was okay. So plugging directly into the battery was a no-go. We still have hash on 80 meters, but uh, this method cleaned up 40 meters just fine. Let's go ahead and add the toroid now between the battery and the radio. Interesting. I just unplugged the uh, battery from the radio, and this noise on 80 meters is coming in over the antenna. It's not coming in over the cable. I'll go ahead and try the toroid anyway. No, it's still a no-go. Now, many of you have said that uh, you haven't seen any noise from your charge controller into your radios. I suspect. Well, let's explain it in a different way. I only get noise when I'm around five or six amps of solar input. So I'm using the big panels or I'm using a combination of the panels. It doesn't matter the type of panel or the brand. I've tried with a variety of different panels. So it's not coming in from the solar panel, it's being generated from the Victron itself. Now, when I'm under 5 amps of solar input, actually the RFI doesn't look that bad. It's when I'm charging with the big panels or a, an array of panels, and I've got a lot of current coming in on the Victron, that the RFI becomes unmanageable. So honestly, guys, I really don't know what to say. Uh, at the moment, the Victron, at least for weak signal work, the Victron is a complete no-go for ham radio. Now, this is a bummer because we seriously need a charge controller, which is RF quiet and has the capabilities of uh, allowing us to use large solar arrays or multiple solar panels uh, with high amounts of voltage and a lot of current coming in. We just don't have that at the moment with a Victron uh, charge controller. So let's give you some background in this series. The point of picking out this Victron, as I've said already, uh, was larger solar arrays at higher voltage and higher current. One of the videos I was going to do in the series was a video on large solar arrays for stations that are really trying to get rid of diesel generators and uh, switching over to solar power for their field communication needs. Big stations, contest stations, expeditions base camps and so on it's possible and i've been doing this for years you guys have seen me doing this for years but unfortunately it looks like at the moment the victron controller is a is a no-go i know there are people who are saying they've been using the victron without any rfi um we're gonna stick to it and see if we can solve this puzzle uh, and fix it so that we can incorporate them but for now uh, I think I need to stick with, for example, dual Genesan controllers until we solve this puzzle. So keep sending those suggestions in, comment, uh, send your ideas in, share your configurations uh, so that we can solve this as a community. Uh, other channels, reach out. If you want to test and prove me wrong, uh, please go for it. Do it. We can make this a community effort. I don't mind at all. So with that, um, I hate to say it, I'm not going to use any Victron controllers right now, but I will continue using them for testing. I'm going to use them at my home for other off-grid needs, but uh, not for radio communications. So what else can I say, guys? That's about it for now.